this foundation. So we will be having a conversation later on. But for now, let me throw it to my colleague, Dr. Marcy Korir. We get uh, the perspective on C-section. Dr. Marcy Korir, a very good evening to you once again. Good evening to you, Akisa, and as you have well said, today we are focusing on caesarean section. There has been a section of reports that, you know, the number of caesarean sections that are done in this country are on the increase. Some private insurers are recording up to 40% of their payments toward uh, maternal deliveries being on caesarean sections. And some sections, uh, actually the NHIF reported that 61% of their payments are to us, the cesarean sections. So with me here to discuss this are two doctors who will shed light on this. Uh, one is uh, the first, the gentleman, is Dr. James Soki. He's the head of medical claims at the Jubilee Insurance Company. He uh, has experience in healthcare management in Kenya. That's from quality management systems, organizational change, risk management, and finance. He holds a Bachelor of Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery from the University of Nairobi and currently is pursuing an MBA in healthcare management at the Strathmore Business School. He's a certified lead auditor for ISO and is also an implementer of um, occupational safety health standards. Uh, the lady here is Dr. Grace Kanye. She's a resident in obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Nairobi based at the Kenyatta National Hospital. She also holds a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery from the University of Nairobi. She has experience as a medical officer in charge of the maternity unit at the PCA Chogoria Hospital. She's a trainer of trainers, certified by the Royal College of Physicians, that's in the UK, and her focus is on advocacy, policy making in obstetrics and gynecology. And I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Kanye. Now that we are discussing caesarean sections, you are in the field of obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, are we seeing uh, in an increased rate of caesarean sections across the country? All right, um, thank you, Dr. Masi, for having me um, tonight. Um, when we look at the World Health Organization in terms of the rates that they have set, the rate that is set is 10 to 15 percent of caesarean sections. Um, we may think that we are having a rise, but it's more in the urban areas, more in the private facilities. But again, we do need data to be able to confirm this locally within the country. Mm. Dr. Soki. Yes. Your insurer reported 40% uh, of their claims are towards a caesarean section from mm -hmm. the story that we did earlier on. Yeah. Is this the case? Yeah, we, on our end, we are seeing the same picture. When we look at uh, the urban population, uh, the uh, providers who are going, uh, the clients who are going to the top tier providers, we are seeing that there is uh, an increase, an uptick in the number of caesarean uh, deliveries. And so, Dr. Ari, mm -hmm. uh, when does one know, for example, I think we should start from the basic, when does one know that they need a CS or they should get a CS done for delivery? Um, that question should be um, addressed during the antenatal care visits that every pregnant woman is encouraged to have, a bare minimum of four. And one of the key things that is addressed during the antenatal care visits is a birth plan. That means how will this mother deliver and where will they deliver and how will they arrive at their facilities. Then key, a key component that will guide how the mother will deliver is a past obstetric history if it's not a first time mom. And if it is a first time mom, there are various uh, things that will be taken into consideration to be able to tell if she will have a normal delivery or um, a planned caesarean section. But in the event one has delivered before and has had um, a history of a previous caesarean section, then it becomes more important to know why was that past caesarean section done and can the mother have um, a planned caesarean section or can they have a normal delivery? But then we are getting reports that, you know, women are opting to just, you know, come and say, Dr. Kanye, I don't want to go through the stress of labor. Mm -hmm. I just want to go straight for a cesarean section on this and this particular date. Is this happening? Um, as my colleague, uh, Dr. Soki, has, um, has indicated, uh, for the women who are um, accessing health care within the private institutions, there are some who will come and request on purely for personal reasons that they want to have an elective, that's a planned caesarean section, 
as opposed to going through a normal delivery. Most of the times when you try to find out the reasons behind it, it's because they are afraid of the pain that is associated with, 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 that, um, with that delivery. Mm -hmm. Yes. So should doctors give in and, you know, just operate on a woman because they have opted to have a caesarean section done when there's no medical indication for it? Okay. So again, that's a discussion between the patient, the pregnant mother, and the primary health care provider. And then again, it at least stresses the importance of the antenatal care visits because it's during these visits that you're able to listen to your client, address the fears and the myths that they would have because most of the time they would say, I'm afraid of pain. And naturally, all of us are afraid of pain. But if you are to explain to them that whichever way we go, whether normal delivery or a planned caesarean section, there will be pain, but we do have ways of addressing the pain. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what a step further is to try and explain the advantages, for example, of a normal delivery as opposed to a caesarean section purely on, on request. I would approach it from the point where the patient is saying, I'm afraid of the pain. So we'd look at the pain from a normal delivery. We don't know for how long labor will be. It's true. But at most, once the delivery has taken place, 12 hours at most, and then the mother is up and about and able to take care of the child. For the planned cesarean section, again, it's, um, the pain of labor will not be there because we will have given you anesthesia, but there's still the wound that needs to be healed after the cesarean section. And this, again, depends on the individual. So bottom line is it's a discussion between the primary health care provider and the patient, allay the fears that the patient has, address the issues that they have and try and give them the pros and cons of each of them. Before I come to you, Dr. Soki, and uh -huh. I'll, I'll be asking you whether uh, you pay out claims on you know, a self-prescribed cesarean section. Uh -huh. what, what are the, as it's apart from a wound healing and the pain for cesarean section, uh -huh. what other effects does a cesarean section have on the woman's body or what other complications or side effects should okay. somebody expect from undergoing a caesarean section. All right, um, so that one usually address when we are taking the consent, that is the permission to go through a caesarean section where we address the risks, all right? So we'll come from, we'll approach it from bottom going downwards, from the skin going downwards. So one of them is the wound may take some time to heal. Sometimes the wound does get infected so that they heal at different uh, rates. Then when we go further down, you can have injury to the internal organs. Here we are looking at the urinary bladder and the small intestines. But at the same same time, we always try, we always strive to try and reduce the risks. But these have been documented, especially where a woman is having repeated uh, caesarean sections. All right. Okay. So, Dr. Soki, yeah. do you ever pay out claims that come to you mm -hmm. uh, for somebody who just opted to have a caesarean section? Um, as insurers or payers in the healthcare space. For us, we actually look at it maybe on the other side. Uh, we've, we've talked about the risk of cesarean section and she's quite rightly spoken about uh, complications because it is major surgery uh, and uh, also the fact that it can require uh, subsequent procedures because of uh, complications of the uh, healing process. For instance, if you get adhesions, you might have another procedure because you had this surgery and it also makes future uh, de deliveries more complicated. So there is that. But there are also the benefits, which is what we want to also focus on as pairs. When it comes to a normal vaginal delivery, um, from the contractions, we get release of oxytocin, which is the love hormone which is going to begin bonding between the mother and the child. As the baby is passing through the bath canal, the fluid is pushed from their lungs. And this is what uh, Dr. Sherry was talking about when she said that it's actually better for the baby. They come out more alert, ready for the extra uterine life. And um, there's also inoculation of good bacteria for long-term health. We're talking prevention of uh, allergies, asthma, and a study done in Harvard has also shown it might have an impact in prevention of non-communicable disease, diabetes, uh, and asthma in the teenage years. Now, when we look at the outcome that we want for a normal delivery, we normally focus on 10 fingers, 10 toes, but we need to look at what about after the delivery? What about later on in life? If you know NCDs is the next epidemic, how is that going to be managed? And also on the mother, she's talked about the risks. So. 
for insurers, we, we don't pay for any procedure that is not medically indicated. So if you come in and you want a uh, cesarean delivery done, but there is no medical indication, as pairs, we cut the line at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you ever get any uh, that are not medically indicated coming to you? Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't know the percentage, but I do know that uh, with our care manager team, uh, we always review every case that uh, comes on our desk for adjudication and we talk with the patient and we talk with the provider, uh, whether it's a hospital or the doctor, mm -hmm. and try and figure out why was this procedure done. And if we do find that it might not have been medically indicated, we will not pay. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is um, at times there is a bit of a lower threshold uh, in preparation for this uh, interview, some of the colleagues in the office were coming up to me and saying, my friend was in hospital, she was told about my cornea, and the next thing she needed was a section, what's going on? But some of these terminologies we need to understand. Um, there are various uh, signs or yeah, signs in pregnancy that will indicate whether or not mm -hmm. we need to go ahead and uh, have a cesarean section done. Mm -hmm. But for example, taking a meconium, which uh, I, I, is quite uh, out there, many mm -hmm. people are concerned about it. I think you should, you should clarify that, you know, meconium is when... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I realize we are talking as three doctors and uh, we need to bridge the gap for yes. the viewer. Yes. Uh, so meconium is when um, the baby uh, voids in utero yes. uh, due to stress. Mm -hmm. Now you have to understand labor in itself is a stressful process. So the passage of meconium can happen uh, mm -hmm. normally in labor. Yes, and but just, just to continue clarifying, meconium is what now will be seen as either greenish mm. yes. or the, the fluid from, yeah. from the mother is not clear. Yeah. Exactly. It's greenish or colored. But I'll, I'll just cut you short on okay. that one because eh? I want to focus on uh, the cost. Mm -hmm. The medical board has put a cap of uh, 96,280,000 mm -hmm. as the charge that doctors should charge mm -hmm. patients for cesarean section. Mm -hmm. So how do you determine, because we've seen some hospitals charge up to 220,000 and it could even go higher depending on the doctor's fees, mm -hmm. the duration in theater. How do you then decide whom to pay what, knowing that cesarean section is a universal mm -hmm. surgery all mm -hmm. across, yeah. as mm -hmm. in if it's done at, at a public hospital and dance a private hospital is the same procedure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you determine who to pay higher and who to pay lower? Okay, I'll try and uh, get my points across um, around this one. The first thing I want to start with is the question on cost is very interesting. The first thing you need to understand about cost in healthcare is it has a direct impact on access. The higher the cost, the fewer people can access the healthcare. So what do we do as a pair, as Jubilee Insurance? We come on board and we sit down with our panel of providers and we figure out how is it that we can offer this care uh, at a more affordable price to the clients. So it's a, it's a, it's a dialogue, it's, a, it's an opportunity to sit down uh, with the doctors because you understand doctors are in charge of 80% of healthcare spend. They're the ones who will determine which hospital, which drugs, which procedure. So these are key partners for us. And once we hit that um, acceptable, acceptable rate, uh, because also with Jubilee being one of the largest players in the medical space, we're able to drive numbers to the provider uh, or to the doctor. Because of that, they're able to give us subsidized rate, rates. Now, with that in mind, for a lady coming in for a procedure, it's important to make sure that you identify a doctor and a provider that will come in within your budget so that you ensure you uh, reduce your claims experience, which will have a knock-on effect at the time of a renewal, renewal of your policy mm -hmm. in terms of loading. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole spectrum that we are looking at in terms of making sure there's affordable care and therefore having a knock-on effect by lowering our, uh, our policy rates and increasing access and getting more people mm -hmm. under the umbrella of insurance. Okay. Yeah. So, Dr. I'll ask you one of the questions from our viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, do doctors prescribe uh, CS for monetary reasons that they have a target they want to reach and so they say we'll prescribe this many number of CSs. All right, um, I think for that viewer I would want to know what circumstances they were in for the caesarean section to be prescribed 
Because at the end of the day, what um, an ob obstetrician gynecologist will mostly be interested in is that a mother goes home, a safe mother, with the least complications, and a healthy baby, again, with the least complications. In terms of monetary gain, I really doubt. Mm. It wouldn't be that um, unethical, but I would want to know the circumstances around which the cesarean section was prescribed, mm. were they explained to, and did they understand that mm. a normal delivery would compromise the mm. mother or mm. the baby or both of them? Okay. Your final comments on that question? Uh, I think it's an interesting one. Uh, I think the answer may not be so simple. We may not have a silver bullet. It might have more to do with knowledge, attitudes, and practice in that um, I'll do what I know. Uh, so there's a component here we need to bring stakeholders in terms of uh, uh, universities and other institutions of learning to do research into this issue. Uh, it also has to do with the attitudes, which I think is a very uh, rich area for us to step in and talk to mothers. Because there's a time in this country where if you did not push your baby, you are seen mm. to be less of a woman. Um, we need to find a middle ground between that and 50% uh, cesarean section rate because we understand studies are showing from uh, WHO that uh, that's the World Health Organization that half of the cesarean sections that are being prescribed are not necessary. Okay. Now, it might not be a clear the doctors to blame, the hospitals are to blame, or the patient, but we do need the stakeholders to come together and set up a system where we say, what is the acceptable rate? How do we engage uh, all these different parties to achieve that? Okay. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Kanye. Dr. Kanye is a resident in obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Nairobi based at the Kenyatta National Hospital. And Dr. James Soki is the head of medical claims at the Jubilee Insurance Company. And they have been discussing with us uh, issues to do with caesarean section and when one needs a caesarean section and whether the costs of the caesarean section are affordable or unnecessary. Thank you for your time, for your valued time. Uh, next week, we will discuss painless normal delivery. So stay tuned for that discussion then. Uh, we take a short break and when we come back, Akisa Wandera will take the rest of the hour with the discussion on matters to do with election. I'm Dr. Masi Korir. Do have a good evening.